Okay, so uh, eventually uh, we're going to put these projects on a device, and we're not there yet, but if you ever noticed on the animate welcome screen there, there's a couple of templates that we can use, Air for Android and Air for iOS, so we're going to use those very soon. Uh, we're going to create a project that will work on an Android device or an iOS device. Uh, so it's built into Animate where you can create projects that are mobile. So I've been working with uh, Adobe Animate and when it was Adobe Flash since about 2005 and I've seen its evolution. It was at one point only a web only um, software where you make websites and web projects and then eventually they transitioned over also to mobile devices because more and more of us have a mobile device. A lot of traffic throughout the world is becoming on a mobile device. So with the latest versions of Animate and Flash, you are able to create projects that go on a device. So if you've got an Android device, uh, here's how we set it up to, to use it. Now, uh, I can't quite show it on my screen here, of course, but I've got a device to show you right here. So you want to... Um, I'll do it in general, and then if you're having individual trouble, we can do that. So, uh, on your device, we need to go to your settings, wherever the settings are of your device. On mine, if I swipe from the top, I can go over to my settings. Now, often these Android devices have a Google settings and a regular settings. You want to go to the regular device settings. When I'm on my regular settings, if I go all the way to the bottom, all the way to the bottom, in my case, at the very, very bottom, it says about the phone or about the tablet or whatever and I have also where it says developer options if you have developer options you're almost there most of you don't have the developer options we have to turn it on so let's go into the about phone screen so in the options go to the about the phone all the way at the bottom and then uh, you should see an entry that says build number whatever your build number says. You're going to tap that seven times. You're going to start tapping it and it's going to give you a message. You're about to activate developer mode. So tap it a few times, seven times, and then it'll eventually say you're a developer. So what that means is I can then go back. So after I've tapped the build number seven times, I go back one screen, and now I should have a new screen. Developer options. I go to developer options and you want to turn on that developer screen you may have an on and off slider at the top I want to turn it on if it's not on and it might give me a pop-up that says these settings are intended for developer use only they can cause your device and the applications on it to break or misbehave so it's just a little scary message saying you're about to activate you know advanced features and I would say we activate it in class and when we're done with class we turn it off just to be secure. I'll click OK on that. Then there's going to be an entry, uh, if you scroll down somewhere, that says USB debugging. You want to turn that one on too. Another scary pop-up will say, are you sure you want to allow this? Use this to copy data between your computer and device. I'll click OK. And then lastly, Lastly, there should also be an option to stay awake. I want to turn that on. I don't want it to get locked every time. I want it to stay on, stay awake, so that I can see what I'm doing. Then I'll go back home. Those are the options I need to turn on for developer mode. So we've got uh, USB debugging, and we've got stay awake. Uh, anyone need any help with activating that? We need to do that first in order for it to, to communicate with us.
All right, anyone else have a little trouble? All right, everyone, so uh, hopefully you have your device set up now. It's going to be under developer mode. So the device uh, should be set up like we just did. And I forgot to say also, uh, we also need a cable. Did you bring your USB cable to plug your device into your phone? If you didn't, I have cables here, but uh, we turn on the developer mode on this thing, and then we plug it in to actually use it. So um, hopefully you brought a cable. Anyone need a cable? USB cable? Okay. Let me give you one right here. Come on up here. Uh, I'll, uh, did you already turn an ID? Uh, no, no, I didn't. Let me get an ID so that I can give you this one. Um, cable? ID, just, uh, <coughs> it's already there. Great. So if I gave you a cable, please remember to return it. Those are, those are limited numbers. So we turned our phone into uh, developer mode, <coughs> and then you want to plug it in.
right, so uh, the phone is in developer mode. I plugged it in. And now we will be able to start to create projects that are usable. Okay, uh, Angie and Sarah, a little, a little quieter there, please. Uh, so we will now be able to create projects that we can use on our device like that game we're gonna make a game so the first thing we want to do here is under the create new column let's select air for Android So we can click on Air for Android. This will give us a project of a specific dimension. <coughs> uh, you know, it's vertical, like a device. And we'll be able to start to create a game for Android devices. Android devices actually have the largest market share in the world. They just uh, surpassed officially I saw a statistic like one or two days ago that now more people use an Android device than any device in the in in the world even Windows for a long time Windows computers were number one uh, and now it's Android devices iOS devices you know iPhones <laughs> they have a lot of fame but they're not the number one used device Android devices are so Samsung and LG and Kindles and all of those so the cool thing is we can create projects in Adobe Animate that can go on devices. So here let's do file save as. And I'm going to save this onto my flash drive. So go ahead and go to your flash drive. And I'm going to save this onto my flash drive, and we will call it. We'll call it my app. I'm going to put today's date on it also, just to keep track of it. But we're going to save that. Now, the. Uh, the project is going to have music, as you saw last time. <coughs> and I do want to remind everyone to either plug in headphones into the device or mute it, because we're going to have a lot of music playing, and that's going to be very distracting. Question? So I'm going to save it here, and then I'm going to get a brand new document that is vertical, like a device, to see if this works, because we set up our device, and then we need to see if it's all fully connected. I'm just going to draw a happy face, just whatever, and I want to see that on my device. I want to get my project onto my device. So make sure it's plugged in. The developer mode is on. I have the Air for Android project. I'm going to save that. And then we, the way we get this onto the device is there's the, there's the publish screen. We are not going to do the control test anymore. We need to do publish. So we'll do this first. Go to File menu and select at the bottom Android settings.
so if we go to the Android settings. And I had a weird I had a weird thing that it said the folder doesn't exist. If you of course it's pretty weird. Try this. Go to file save as and save it somewhere else. Maybe on, on another folder or another no, that's that's desktop. Yeah, yeah. It was very odd if mine had that, but it's not supposed to do that. So we'll just save it somewhere else and then go back to those settings. Okay, the thing about uh, creating apps is that, uh, honestly, it's, it's uh, kind of complex the first time to set it up. Once we've set it up, then it's going to be pretty easy <coughs> to actually create the app. The setup is this screen right here, Air for Android. If we were making apps for an iPhone, we would have something very similar. So taking a look at this screen, we have Output File. This is going to save our project. We can save it to different folders if we want. We don't need to change it. It's going to create a file called .apk. So it's not going to be a movie file. It's not going to be a Swift animation. It's going to be an APK file, an Android package file. So it's going to be an app that runs on Android devices. The name that will appear the below your icon on the device is right there, app name. So I'm going to have a name on my app. And if I'm looking at the Twitter app or the Facebook app, that's the name below the icon, right? That's the name below the icon. I'm going to leave it as is for the moment, but later on I can change its name under app name, and that's the name that will appear below the icon. Uh, this, air, this app ID is, uh, for the moment, don't worry about it, but this is for <coughs> identifier. These projects that we create, we could uh, eventually actually publish them to the real app store and you could sell them for 99 cents or more. So you can get rich off of this class, right? You learn how to make a game, you publish it, and you're gonna, your game's going to go viral and you're going to get rich. As long as you put the copyright information on there? Uh, of course, we're going to do all of that eventually. Yes, we want to copyright it and, make, and get rich 99 cents at a time. So. That's your unique identifier. Don't worry about it right now. Later on, I think we will go through that whole step. I think we will eventually publish it to the App Store for real, if you want. You know, if you polish your game up pretty well, you can actually publish them and people can download them. Version number, that's pretty self-explanatory. This is version one of our project. We can change that number to anything we want. Eventually, we'll make a version two, whatever. So we'll leave that alone. Version label is optional, but it's another way to, to put a version number here or a little note or whatever. Just don't worry about it. And aspect ratio is, are we going to have our, our app running in portrait mode, in landscape mode, or auto for it to switch around? Right now, I'm going to leave it on portrait, but eventually this project will be put to landscape. When I was doing the demo last time of the game, remember I had the game landscape. I wanted landscape. We could make our game vertical, that's fine. Except, you know, for games they're often landscape because you want the wide, you know, the wide view. Um, we'll leave it on portrait. Full screen audio orientation, don't worry about it. Render, don't worry about it. So I didn't change anything here at all. Just general information that we're about to create an actual app. On the tabs at the top, let's go to languages. And here, we should choose a language that our app will be in. It can be more than one language. I'm going to select English. Later on, I might make it in different languages, so you can turn that on. But I'll select English. <coughs> let's go to the permissions tab. When you download an app, or when you do updates, it might tell you, this app would like to use the microphone. This app would like to save files on your device. These are the permissions. So ours, we want it to access the phone state. We want the app to be able to check on aspects of the device. Is it, is it low on battery? Is it locked? You know, basic features. If we wanted our app to access the internet, Turn that on. If we wanted the app to take a photo, we would turn on camera. We only need the read phone state at the moment. Icons. We won't do this right now. We'll do it later. 
but here's the spot where we add the icons to our app. So when I look at my device and I see all of these great apps, all of those icons, you know, we need to design those. Right now we're going to get some sort of generic little icon, but later on I want to make some icons. And notice there's are, are squares, these different sizes. I need all of these sizes. We're, we'll design those later, and then we, and then we connect them. Let's go back to deployment. Now, sometimes also, when you do some of these things in Animate, it might pop up on your device, which it just did on mine. On my device, it popped up and it said, allow USB debugging. Uh, and I want to say on my device, allow, always allow from this computer, and I'll click OK. So if you didn't get any pop-up on your device, don't worry, it might come up later. But if you do get a pop-up, turn on the USB debugging one more time. What's that? Yeah, exactly. Why do your thing doesn't have a USB debugging? Exactly. Yeah. What's that? Why your phone doesn't do the USB debugging thing? Uh, say that one more time. Why do your phone doesn't do your debugging action? It just gives you a use for things. Seven separate M I. So this screen is that complicated screen that once we set it up once, it makes sense. But what this screen is about is, first of all, at the very bottom, uh, it should hopefully say, uh, when we publish it, install our app onto the connected device, also launch it, where's your device? So mine is right there. If you don't see anything down on the serial number, I'll help you in a moment, or, or Angie will help you in a moment, but here, if you don't see anything here, maybe click refresh. But Adobe Animate should see your device if you activated developer mode and all of that. Uh, what happens if you click refresh? Uh, nothing. Where did you connect it? Oh, my. OK, uh, just wait one moment. Now, on the next far right here, on air time, air run time, under air run time, the way that this works internally is that uh, our animate projects get converted into Android projects in one of two ways. Uh, the person has to install Adobe Air on their phone and then they could use our app. Or we could bundle the extra <coughs> code right into our app. I would recommend to select that one, embed the runtime. It's an extra step to have people go download this app, and then you can play my game. People are going to get annoyed. So we'll say, include the extra code right in our app so that our game runs right away. On the Android deployment type, this should be just fine. We want to create a version that is ready for the device, not a debug version. So it should be ready to go on the device. And then we get to the top part here, certificate. Uh, to become an app developer is actually really easy. You don't have to you know, apply or do any extra steps. Uh, when you want to release the app, we'll get to that later, to the world. But right now, to become an app developer, it's this screen right here. We need a certificate. We need a special file that identifies us. I'm a developer. Here's my app. So if we have a certificate, we can then use it. We don't have a certificate, so we will create one. We're about to create a special file that will identify us as a, as a developer. Definitely, once we create it, save that file in a very secure place because you want to keep using that file in your future projects. You can create one whenever you want, but then it doesn't quite work because now you're a new developer. You want to keep using the same file we're about to create right now. So click on Create. We're going to create a certificate. We're going to become an official app developer. 
Android app developer. There's a bunch of stuff that we can fill in here. We can do this for real. We can do it for fake if we want. It doesn't matter. Uh, again, if we're going to make a real app and publish it eventually for real, it might be a good idea to fill this in for real. So publisher name is, uh, is my name, your name. You are the publisher. You are the developer. Organization unit is uh, the fancy name of saying your job title. You can put anything you want, but developer is just fine. You're a developer. That's your organizational unit. Organizational name. What's the name of your app company? Again, you can put whatever you want here, and it's real. You are a developer. So I can make up a company called Victor Apps. You can put whatever you want. This is not really changeable later. So if you get an idea later that you want a different name and all of that here, you have to create another certificate. You can create as many as you want. And you can't really change these later. So I'm creating my Victor's Apps company. Uh, I'm operating in the US, so I'll leave that alone. And the reason this file is important is because this file shows Google, eventually, you are a developer, here is your app, you typed your password, it's your official app, so that someone else doesn't release an app with your company credentials. So make up a password here. Memorize that password. You will not be able to retrieve it. You will not be able to change it. If you forget what your password is, you'll have to create a new certificate. And if you create a new certificate with the exact same details, it'll be rejected. Because a different person is trying to use the same certificate. So we'll just make sure this is all correct the first time. So I need to write it down. I'm going to forget. Type is default, don't worry about it. Validity period, 25 years, don't worry about that. Our certificate is valid for 25 years. So that assumes we're going to still be making apps 25 years from now. Don't change that. That's the default that we want. This file, we're going to save it somewhere, like on your flash drive. So let's click Browse. On my flash drive, it's going to save a, uh, a file, a, a P12 file, a certificate file with whatever name there. You can keep it the name of the project, that's fine. You can put your last name on it or your company name, that's fine. But save it somewhere. I'm going to rename mine to Victor Apps, the name of my company. So this P12 file is going to be used to sign my app to vouch, to confirm that this is my app. So that P12 file is very important. Click Save. And then back on this screen, click OK. So it'll think about it for a moment, and it'll say, self-signed certificate has been created. So my app, my, uh, my animate project, is going to use this P12 file to confirm that I am the developer. The password you just made up, type it in there, and then say remember password. And then at the bottom, click publish. Okay, let me check you one moment. Click Publish, wait a moment, and then check on your device, and the app should, the smiley face should appear on your device. <coughs>
All right, everyone, so, uh, you know, I make it look so easy, and it's not sometimes, but I have my project then on my device. This is the whole point of this. We are now going to be able to use our, our, our animate projects on a real device, hopefully. Now, raise your hand if it didn't go smoothly. I just want to see for people. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I knew that it was going to take a little bit of trouble because I knew it was going to take a moment because we have so many different devices and everyone's a little different. The tablets that I have, the tablets that I have are the ones that should be fully set up, ready to go. So if yours is having a little trouble, we can try to figure it out. Worst case scenario, you use one of my tablets. But uh, let's, uh, let's see here, let me get a show of hands. How many of you did, did it work? Did you see your happy face on your app, on your thing eventually? Uh, only two people, okay, three people or so. Uh, yes. Yeah, mine, mine says that too. Uh, if you get this warning, that's okay. Um, don't worry about that. But if you did see it on your device, then it worked. All right, so uh, let's take a short break. If it worked up to this point, great. If it, if it didn't, check with us to make sure something works because obviously you won't have much to do if none of this works. So it's 11.10-ish. Uh, Let's take a 10 minute break, 11.20. And then by that time, everything should be ready to go and then we'll get started.